Here we go. Spoiler alert, audience. Yeah. Look at that! I love that! Look at Monday! Look at everybody! Full house, everybody! Welcome to the show! Hello, Rosetta! Hello, Coon Rapids! Hello, Plymouth! Hello, Red Wing. Welcome to the show, everybody. Have a seat. Let's get started. It is our, it is our penultimate episode before our little holiday break, and she's Santa's favorite helper. Audience, give it up for Miss Kendall, everybody. Hello. Hi. Aww. You look fantastic. Thanks. You look beautiful. I love that skirt. Like a Christmas tree. <laughs> may I borrow that for a Christmas party? Yes. That's right, please. Yes, you may. It's very floofy. It's very floofy. <laughs> How was your weekend? Um, it was good. We had our family Christmas, so it was a fun weekend. How did that go? Any fights? Any food throwing? Any yelling? Any... Um, no, but we did play Pictionary for the first time ever. Have you ever played Pictionary? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... Yeah, board I'm games so are so bad at that. Oh, are you competitive though? Like No, I'm not like you, Jason. Okay, yeah. I <laughs> My family doesn't like to play board games with me cuz I get very No, I know. No. Mm. No, it's my fault. I own it. Mm -hmm. I get violently competitive. Like yeah. if I like It's aggressive. No, not violently. I'm not like throwing things, no, but I mean It's just it's aggressive. But if like oh, let me give you an example. If I'm my favorite game is Taboo. Do you guys know Taboo? It's yeah. It's like password. And there's, you know, like, let's say the, the word you're trying to get your teammate to guess is, um, let's just use, it's Jason. Uh -huh. There's five taboo words that you can't say. So right. Disney, Dallas. TV show. Vodka, pull tabs. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't say those words. So I get so, I admit it, I get very frustrated if I'm team with someone that's lacking in the skill set. Yeah, I get, oh yeah, I start, yeah, I get very jittery mm. and I, my volume keeps going up and up and up. Mm. And so nobody likes to be on my team. It's fine, oh. it's fine. But, yeah, I don't uh, want to be on your team. No, you don't no. want to be. I would, you would probably cry. I'd probably make you cry, yeah. I would just be very drunk by the end of the game. <laughs> probably, yeah, you, you would need it. Hey, okay, so let me, let me, really quick, here's a little public service announcement. So we were out, out and about with the family. I was mm -hmm. out with the, the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, Colin, and we're sitting there, Aunt Lisa, and we're at Serums, which will shock no one. We were at uh, my favorite place in, 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 uh, in Anoka getting chicken wings. And there's, there's a, a table of youngins in front of me. There's like six of them. And I was watching, I was watching how they interacted with, with, with the server. And it made me so upset, because you know me. I, I was a server. I worked at Red Lobster. I'm a proud mm -hmm. alumnus of the Claw. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yep. And you know how I feel about the service industry. Mm -hmm. I, I think everybody should have to work in the service industry two weeks out of their life. I do. You mm -hmm. would have a much better appreciation yes. for what those folks go through. But I was watching how these youngins like treated the server. They weren't making eye contact. This one young lady cracked me up because I'm a, I watch this kind of thing when I'm in a restaurant. She had a mouthful of chicken wings in one hand and then she had a plate full of the carcasses in another and she handed the, she wouldn't even make eye contact with the server. She was like this, and she was like, she was handing oh, it like, they, like the server was her servant. And I just want to say to all of you, were you guys raised by wolves? I mean, my, my mother would have slapped me if I would have behaved like that. I got to tell you, eye contact and please and thank yous cost nothing, mm -hmm. cost nothing. And they mean a great deal to people. Yep. I know it's fundamental. It's a, it's a very basic thing, but I just watched how these people treated the server and I just thought, God, what's wrong with you that you would treat, you're no better than that server that's serving you right there. Oh. Look at her and say, hello, she's a human being. She has families and problems just like you. I was really disturbed by that. So all of you out there, just smile sometimes and say thank you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bother me, I don't like that. 
I don't like that. Mm -mm. I don't like when people treat servers bad. Now, if you get bad service, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, <laughs> then call the manager over. Anyway, <laughs> time for the hotness, everybody. Let's get going. <laughs> you have good stuff today. Eddie Murphy returned to Saturday Night Live for the first time. I love this so much. Mm -hmm. For the first time in 35 years, people were wondering, why is this such a big deal? That's why, 35 years. And a special appearance drew a huge audience. The ratings are in, nearly 10 million viewers turned in, making it the most watched episode in more than two years. And he brought back some of his iconic characters. Look at this. Hi, boys and girls. It's your old pal, Mr. Robinson. So much has changed since we last spent some time together. My neighborhood has gone through so much. It's gone through something called gentrification. <laughs> Can you say gentrification, boys and girls? It's like a magic trick. White people pay a lot of money, and then poof, all the black people are gone. <laughs> but where do they go, boys and girls? Back to where they come from, of course. Atlanta. <laughs> now it's just me by myself now. Y'all probably wondering how Mr. Robinson can afford to live in this fancy neighborhood. Well, that's the word of the day. <laughs> Squatters' rights. It's like finders keepers, but for other people's houses. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's so good. Then the neighbors come over and wondering where their four, a 72 inch, to, their 72 inch big screen TV went, and Mr. Robinson has it in his house. <laughs> it's so good. There they are, the, the, the neighbors. This, I gotta tell you, that's Mr. Robinson talking about all the changes in the neighborhood. Well, here's another Eddie favorite. Show little little green flavor here showing up on Weekend Update. Look. <laughs> well, we just thought people wouldn't know who you were. <laughs> How the hell are people not gonna know who I am? I'm Gumby. All right, let me tell you something. I saved this show from the gutter, and it's thanks to me. This is the thanks that I get for saving the show. Shame on you, Lord Michaels. Shame on you, NBC. Shame on you. All right, Gumby, Gumby, just calm down. Calm down. Don't tell me to calm down, trailer boy. <laughs> and I gotta sit and listen to this black. Telling me people won't remember who I am? <laughs> you know why? Hey, you know why you two are behind this desk? Because your jokes don't have legs, you schmucks. I pass kidney stones with more personality than the two of you. Oh, so good. I'm Gumby. Chris Rock, Tracy Morgan, and Dave Chappelle all made special appearances on the show. They, he also brought back uh, Velvet Jones, too. And it, it, look, I, I was watching Colin, who's a little younger than I am, and some of the references were lost on him, which I'm sure probably on you. But speaking for my generation and our generation, there were two VHS tapes that I ran almost empty. And that was the best of Gilda Radner from SNL. Yeah. I'm Rosanna Rosanna Dana. And then I also, the best of Eddie Murphy, I must have watched that tape. Velvet Jones, uh, Celebrity Hot Tub, uh, Ray, <laughs> James Brown, Celebrity Hot Tub, uh, Gumby, he's so good and it was so good to see him and it reminds you, he hasn't lost a step. I mean, he is just the best. Did you watch it? I did watch it. Yeah. I watched it, I mean, um, a rewind like a minute ago and you said something about VHS tape, you lost me. I know. But before that, yes, I truly enjoyed that episode of SNL. Were great. some of the references lost on you? Um, some of them, but yeah. like I, I watched, um, oh gosh, now I can't think what it's really called, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Mr. Right? Rogers, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, now I can't think what it's really called. But so that was, that whole skit was funny. Gumby oh. is still funny. I mean, it's still, even if you don't know what he's talking it's about. It's so good. It just, Eddie. We can't wait because he's going to go back on the road. I mean, this is the beginning of kind of a, of a, of a comeback. He's go, doing stand-up again. He has a Netflix deal. It's, it's good to have you back, Eddie. It's good to have you back. Next on the dish, we're getting our first look. Executive producer Jeff can't contain himself with this next story. It's our first look at Jennifer Hudson as Aretha Franklin in the film Respect. Look at this. C T. 
say it a hundred times a year. I love a good trailer. That's a good trailer. Mm -hmm. That's a really good trailer. Mm -hmm. She looks amazing. That, that is going to be huge. I, the script better be good. They better do Aretha justice. I'm just saying the script better be good, mm -hmm. but that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I no, love her. I know. Both of hers. It is Aretha and Jennifer. It, it, is, it is amazing to think that she came out of American Idol. You know what I mean? I know. I, it's, it's, and she was like, what? Top she seven? didn't win. She didn't even like make top three. I don't she think. wasn't no. I think she wasn't even like. She was seventh. seventh. Yeah, yeah, she was. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has to be. I mean, you know, there's Carrie Underwood. There's uh, Kelly Clarkson. Uh, Kelly Clarkson. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, but then there has to be. Jen she's right there. Yeah. I mean, if sometimes they create a careers up and flow. There's. I mean, she won an Oscar and mm -hmm. out of American Idol. It's mm -hmm. nuts. It's nuts. Go grab another cup of coffee, everybody. We have a much more ahead after this. <laughs> Coming up, more hot dish. She's the queen of Christmas, and she just dropped off a fabulous present for us all. Check out Mariah Carey's brand new music video. Then it was a practice in art and a practice in patience for little old jittery me. Oh, maybe if you did a little less talking and a little more painting, you'd be right on track. Mine looks like One of the most unique and calming and fun events, painting with Pino and Kendall, our visit to Pino's palette. And it all comes down to this, the season finale of Ted's Holiday Movie Reviews. And did Ted save the best for last? His review of Christmas in Rome when we return. Before we eat, I just wanted to say a few words. Make it quick, Dad. I'm starving. <laughs> I will. I will. I just want to thank everyone for being here, and not just our immediate family. I'm talking about all the cousins and their kids and everybody. That's how it should be. That's right, Pop. I know everyone's busy with their lives and has their own things that they have to do, but it means so much that you're here with us in our home for the holidays. And that goes for both of us. How come you're sister couldn't host. Because my sister's house is a dump, Daniel. No, I got to pay for all this food? Oh, hell no. As I have always said, this house is happier when it's full. Get out the bathroom! Well, son, you and Donna have been such gracious hosts, I just hope I haven't been a nuisance. Well, you hell, air so damn dry. What are you talking about? We love having you here. And of course. Of course. We love when family visits, don't we? That's right. Another clip from Saturday Night Live with Eddie Murphy. The brutal truth about family staying with you over the holidays. Yes, please stay longer. That's right. Family is like, family is like meat. Goes bad after about three days. Yeah, you know. She's like, oh, it's getting stinky in here. Probably should remove it from the fridge. That's yes. right. Next in the dish, it was a rough opening weekend for cats. Oh, I get it. Thank you, Kendall. The movie, <laughs> the staff gets bonuses for every pun. Just <laughs> FYI, yeah. The movie brought in $6.5 million uh, over the weekend, uh, just a third of what it was projected to do. Now, remember, guys, you're going to have to help me keep my promise. I re remember on Friday, I promised I'm not going to bust on this movie anymore. Already, the folks behind the scenes are working on cat fixes. The reporter, the Hollywood Reporter said, thousands of theaters, this is not a joke, got notifications that Universal Studios was working on improving the visual effects. Some of the characters like Judy Dench, Idris Elba, and James Corden are briefly shown to have human body parts. <laughs> You can do it, Jace. <laughs> you can even see Judy's wedding ring. You can see Dame Judy. Dame Judy. <laughs> You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. 
gonna make it. You can see Judy's wedding ring. Director Tom Hooper admitted he barely finished the movie on time. The movie is getting terrible reviews and right now has an 18% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, here's the deal though. We want to be fair because I don't like people busting on Star Wars. So I'm just saying, producer, we sent producer Ted to go see it. Oh God. <laughs> We're going to have you, his review tomorrow on our show. That's right. Yeah. I, I told Ted I don't want to know. I don't want to know how he feels about it. Do you not want to know? I don't. I really don't. And mm -hmm. I'm, but I, 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 I get it. People that love this, this Broadway musical, they're mad, that, like Aaron Schwab. So I'm not, I'm not going to make any more jokes because the jokes write themselves. That's right. <laughs> Next in the dish, Mariah Carey's song. They do. But come on. Let me just say this. Whose fault is it, though? But no, seriously, if you're Universal Studios, it's kind of your fault. If you put this director on a timeline, you knew this movie was loaded with special effects. You're turning Dame Judi Dench into a calico cat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Give the director time to finish it. I think the fault lies with the studio. If you rushed it, if you rushed it out the theater, you know what I mean? I mean. And there's like, you know, and you forgot to CGI, CGI out Jason Derulo, you know? I don't think they forgot. I think the cinema score would be a little higher if that was the case, but you know. Well, cats have nine lives. This is like live number three, and we'll see if it makes it past Four. six. Four. Well, and this is unprecedented. I'm not, I can't think. Jeff, can you think of a time that we've done? I can't think of a time where a studio has released a picture and then called theaters and said, can we send you a new copy? You know what I mean? That doesn't happen. And that's what's happening. This is bizarre. Next in the dish, Mariah Carey's song, All I Want for Christmas is You. Look, it's become a staple at Christmas. This month, 25 years after it debuted, the song finally hit the top of the charts for the first time. Now, Mariah, Mariah is giving the song a new look. Look at this. I love her. I do. But can she not move? I mean, she's. That's about it. She just did this. Eric, come over here. Yeah. No, take this shot over here. That's it. Oh, there was no feet moving. Oh, there's. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no feet pop. moving. Just a pop. There we go. Again, I break the stereotype. Not all gay guys can dance. No. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, ooh, it was terrible. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I love you. Oh, yeah, oh, please. I'm like a flamboyant cucumber. Come on, you can't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the video already has nearly 11. <laughs> flamboyant cucumber. <laughs> I just called myself a flamboyant cucumber. Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you did. I should have said potato because there was that guy that writes me. Bless his heart. I, now look, I'm a sensitive guy and I don't like getting hate mail, but there's this guy that hates me. Like, <laughs> thinks I am the broadcasting antichrist. I mean, he does. He, and he sends me a message about every four months and it's... <laughs> He dresses up like a he dresses up a potato with glasses, <laughs> and he calls me Potato Head. And he, goes, <laughs> and he thinks he thinks no, it's the one time that I actually think it's hysterical. <laughs> anyway.
Next up, as we approach the end of Wait, 20... Wait, what? No, no who does? rewind. No. He dresses up a potato? Yeah, with glasses and he little has Lego glasses hair. glasses and yeah. Lego hair? Because he thinks my head looks like a potato. <laughs> so, anyway, next up... <laughs> Next up, as we approach the end of 2019, not only is it the end of a new year, but it's the end of a decade as well. Best of lists are everywhere these days, but one list names the worst movies of the past 10 years. It comes from The Hollywood Reporter, so this is a, a good list. See if you agree with some of their findings. These are in no particular order. First up, The Emoji Movie from 2017. The article calls the movie an offensive exercise in blatant product placement. Oh, well, but it, is it really a product? They're emojis. I mean, I, but yeah, it's horrible. When you're making a movie about emojis, you've officially, you, you've threw in the towel. There's, I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. Happy, sad, mad. Fingers. There we go. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Next up, a movie with more star power than an award show. From 2010, Valentine's Day. It starred Julia Roberts, Bradley Cooper, Anne Hathaway, Jamie Foxx, Florence Henderson, <laughs> Muhammad Ali. I mean, everybody was in this movie. Yeah. Charles Nelson Riley. The article says the movie is so bad, it actually ruined the actual holiday. What? It ruined Valentine's Day. Were they well, trying to redo Love Actually? It was well, kind of supposed to be like that. Yeah, it was the late, great Gary Marshall, who is, he brought us a uh, pretty woman. Uh-huh. Um, but he did Valentine's Day, and then they did Mother's Day and New Year's Day, and then Arbor Day. I mean, it was just... A, I love Arbor Day. It's it was, very underappreciated. Well, you can get it on Cinemax. The next group, the next choice is a group, the next choice is a group of movies starring one actor. Adam Sandler. Despite being an Oscar contender this year, Sandler is called out for his horrible movies in the past decade, like Jack and Jill, That's My Boy, and Just Go With It. The author of the article says the movies are so bad, it's no wonder Sandler had to move to Netflix. <gasps> oh no, she didn't. Look, say what the critics will, people love him and people love these movies. Adam's Netflix movies are routinely the most watched things on Netflix. Mm -hmm. TV shows, movies, they are huge. People like them. There's an audience for it. Yeah. One more. One more. One more. It's actually three movies, the worst of the past decade. Look. What are you doing later? I'm working at the hardware store till 7. I'll have Taylor pick you up then. I would like to bite that lip. I think I'd like that too. My safe word is platypus. That's what <laughs> Despite box office success, all three Fifty Shades movies made the list mainly because of the bad dialogue, zero chemistry, between, zero chemistry between leads Jamie Dornan and Dakota Johnson. Yeah, zero chemistry. If you are going to do a movie about Fifty Shades of Grey, you should at least make sure your leads, who have to go in the secret room together, that you should at least see if they have chemistry together. It was awful. Do you not feel super uncomfortable watching that scene? Well, I feel bad for Jamie Dornan's a great actor. Yeah, I, he has they a just... Netflix show. Um, uh, her oh, Dakota Johnson, she's all right. I mean, but, she's I mean, fine. yeah, she's fine. She's funny. She's, she's good in funny movies. Yeah, she doesn't get the yeah. But Jamie's a really good actor. They're just saddled with horrible, horrible scripts. I mean, what did she just say? What did he just say? I don't know. I had to tune <laughs> out. I literally so turned bad. my earpiece off. <laughs> Other movies on the list include Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, and Cowboys and Aliens uh, with Harrison Ford and uh, um, J uh, uh, who? Daniel Craig, yeah. Did you just say James Bond? Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. James Bond. Still ahead, everybody. Kendall and I try our hand at painting at Pino's Palette uh, in St. Louis Park. And then a young tour guide meets an American businessman in Rome. But will they fall for each other? Ladies and gentlemen, it is the season finale of Ted's Christmas Movie Reviews. In just a little bit. Back
It's something to do during the long holiday break or really any time of the year. Sip and cr uh, craft businesses. Sip and craft businesses are popping up. Oh, I wanted to make sure I said that right. Are <laughs> Can the audience and I just go to Disney World? Can we just go? Uh, come on, Ted, let's put Sanford and Son on and let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Sip and craft businesses are popping up all over, and Kendall and I decided to get into the holiday spirit at one of them in St. Louis Park. But things got a little competitive during our time at Pinot's Palette. Look at this. I'm Bob Ross. And we're here at Pino's Palette getting ready to learn how to make that right there. And when I say we, I mean myself and Kendall. And when I say myself and Kendall, I really just mean me. Because in a moment, you'll see what Kendall's really here to do. Okay, I have my non-alcoholic beverage. Because over there above the bar, it says paint, drink, and have fun. I can do two of those. I'm going to paint and have fun. This is water. But look over there. Someone's listening to all the rules. Wow. That's part of the experience, Jason. Yeah. Could you leave a hand to actually paint? No. Thank That's you. That's what Maya's for. Mm. Come on, man. Maya, can you set up Kendall's wood? Because she's a little busy. Thanks, darling. Yeah. Cutest helper on the block. Do I need a hand yet? Not yet. Uh, using the chalk, we're going to stencil the shape of your Santa on first. A nice, long tail. Long, smiling face. Long, smiling face. face. OK. Jason, I, I hate to tell you, but that just looks like a letter P. <laughs> it's the old A and P logo. Oh, yeah. so I'm winning? You're winning okay. so far, yeah. Well, secret ingredient. So I'm going to bring okay. my brush down and touch it into the white and grab a little paint on the tip. Oh, I'm going to sure. start by painting across the top of his face. Mine actually looks like it could be <coughs> Santa. Kendall, I'm trying to concentrate. If you could keep it done a little bit, thanks. <laughs> Girls just trying to have fun. Girls just trying um, to Um, Kendall, win. concentrating. I thought this would be a really fun date for us, but okay. Okay, first of all, we're not dating. And second of all. Oh my god, like a play date. Yeah, okay. Did you just say ooh yeah to Jason's? It, it almost looks exactly like the one on the, uh, on the wall. Are you kidding? Oh, maybe if you did a little less talking and a little more painting, you'd be <laughs> right on track. <laughs> Mine looks identical to Jeremy's. How does yours look? Shut up. Jeremy, I'm ready for your next order. Okay. Oh, whoops. Hmm. What's going on, Kendall? You having Nothing, problem? Jason. Everything's fine. Whoop! Oh, my God. Well, you weren't joking. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. God, my Santa looks really good. I mean, don't you, don't you think, Jeremy? Heck yeah. We're going to create a circle. A circle's an oval. Oh look, mine's a circle. I oddly feel pretty confident about my Santa oh, shut right now. Up. <laughs> mine kind of looks like a pig with a hat. Um, I'm my strategy is I'm not talking and I'm painting. My goal now is just to bother Jason. Mm-hmm. Mission accomplished. Ooh. You know, nice Do you like day. that? Is that good? Yeah. Wonderful. Mm. Oh, we're talking now, are we? Well, I'm so ahead that um, I, I have some time. If you want me to come help you in a little bit, I will. I'm fine, thanks. I gotta say, I did much better than I thought I would. We'll see how Kendall does. Jeremy, thank you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Oh, I don't want you. Okay, guys. Don't turn around. Bye. 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 Don't look. Okay, Jason left because I'm taking too long. But we will have a big reveal on the show right now. Kendall joins me now. Okay. I gotta tell you, I will say, seeing yours, I didn't get to see, you're doing a really good job. Yeah, I actually am not bad at art. No, you're really good. Uh, yours Thank is probably you. better than mine, so let's look at Kendall's artwork. This is what it should look like, and that's what it is. Oh, look at me go. That's really good. Hey, look, Ma, I made oh, it. Kendall, I am very impressed. Look at that.
thing. Okay, and now let's look at the mine Jesus. and yeah, this is mine. Let's see this. Do we have the little VO? That, no wonder they got thrown oh, away on accident. My, did ours get? Listen to this audience. Ours got thrown away by accident. They were, yeah. I think someone was cleaning out where we store things. Someone was cleaning out, and I was looking for them for this episode. I was like, I can't find them anywhere. Yeah. I think it's because of Jason. I think it's because of mine. <laughs> that is not good. I mean, looking back, I thought I was doing really well. That is not. That Santa looks like he has a problem. I told I mean, you. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, you needed more wine. I did need, yeah, that's probably what it is. <laughs> Thanks to Pino's Palette. They're in St. Louis Park. They're so good. Different types of classes. You can get two people, 15 people. It's a lot of fun. Thanks. And the, the instructor was so great with us. Still ahead, we're heading into the audience to talk about holiday traditions when we return. Back after this, everybody. <laughs> Yours is really good. It is. Well, whether it's eating the same dinner on Christmas Eve, leaving cookies for Santa when you go to bed before Christmas, odds are every family has a certain holiday tradition every year. I'm asking our audience about their traditions now. Where's Shelly at? Hi, Shelly. Give it up for Shelly, everybody. Okay. Do you, have, do you have a weird kind of bizarre tradition? Yeah. So in my husband's family, we draw names. Okay. And then the person who had received the box of crap. Oh, box what, of crap. That's what you call yes. it? The box of crap. Literally, the box of crap. Yeah, it's been going on for like 30 years. So, in the box of crap <laughs> is usually some fine items that have been shopped for at Savers or Goodwill or something like that. So, it's yes. like bad items. Yes. Because you can get some good things there, but this is. Crap. Oh, this is bad items. This but, is yeah. But. Most of the time we're like highly coordinated, you know, so putting an outfit together. Like a horrible outfit. Yes. So, uh, correct me, if, so does one per, is one person in charge of the crap or is it a, I mean, yeah, is there a so, crap keeper? So we, yeah. so we draw names. Yeah. So every year there's new crap. There's a new right. crap keeper. So, okay. the, so the person who received the box of crap yeah. will give the box of crap. Oh, I love that. Yes. And then the receiver of the box of crap has to put on the box of crap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Videos and pictures. I have videos and pictures. After this Christmas, send us this year's crap outfit, okay? Absolutely. absolutely. And we'll shame them on television. Yes. And yeah. so my family lives in Fargo. This actually was like my sister in law wrote in, it made it the, into the Fargo forum like a couple of years I ago. I love this. Will you send it to us, please? Absolutely. Give it up for Shelly, everybody. Where is Jess? Jess, come over here. Give it up for Jess, everybody. Let's say hi to Jess. Okay. You have to follow crap. Good luck. I'm yes. having a hard time with no, that. No, it's fine. Um, we always get a used gift from my mother. She likes to reuse and re-gift. And one year I got a is she dirty. Right now? She is. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. I, hi, mom. I have her sweater on that she will wear, and I asked for an ugly sweater, and I think I offended her. <laughs> So, Hi, Mom. so, yeah, that's the camera right there. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hello, re-gifter. That's right. So, so one like, year I got, I asked for one of those things to make salsa with. And I opened it and I'm like, Mom, did you use this first? And my stepdad goes, how ungrateful are you? And she goes, Tim, no, it's, it's from the Goodwill. <gasps> so, <laughs> yes. Seriously? It was dirty. It was gross. Yeah. It was a dirty gift. It was a dirty wow. gift. Well. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you guys should combine forces. This is my work wife. Oh, work wife. They're perfect. There we go. Thanks, guys. Yes. Okay. Stand up, you guys. These folks, if you have watched us over the years, they will look very familiar. They got engaged on our show, everybody. Thank you. How are you guys doing? You're doing all right. How long? Okay, is this your anniversary today? 
It's what? four years since we were here. Four years? Yeah. Since, oh, since Today. you were here. Since yeah. we were, yeah. Oh, got my engaged. goodness. How are things going? They're okay. <laughs> <laughs> You paused for a very long time. Let me re- Hey, Kim, how are things going? <laughs> things are going well. That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. We're doing a lot better. We've had a lot of health stuff, so yeah. we haven't been able to yes. get the wedding going, but we're doing better now. Okay, so. I'm still available. Okay, I, hope I so. got my license. I'm ready to go as <laughs> soon as you guys are. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Give it up, everybody. If you have questions for me, you can always find me on our social medias. Just search for Jason Show TV on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And we're going to be off for a few, uh, I'll be gone for a little while. We'll be back with all new shows with me starting January 6th. If you would like tickets for those shows, we would love to see in January. Just go to our Jason Show Facebook page and click that ticket tab. Still ahead, producer Ted reviews his final Hallmark Christmas movie of the season. Where does it... Where does Christmas in Rome rank? You'll find out when we return. Back in a moment. Starting your own tool company? That should be a piece of cake. Pun intended. <laughs> Thank you. I, on the other hand, have created a boulder, a rock type <laughs> dough scenario. You have. I yes. do not this have to fix. <laughs> Let me help you. Okay. You have to need it. Mm -hmm. You can't be afraid to really push it around. It's like ghost, but with dough. Yeah. <laughs> That's a clip from Christmas in Rome. An independent-minded American tour guide crosses paths with an American businessman. But will they risk their careers for love? It stars Lacey Chabert and Sam Page and is part of Hallmark's Countdown to Christmas. And as we inch closer to December 25th, a member of our staff is savoring the last days of the holiday season. And that means audience... For the last time this season, it's time for Producer Ted Reviews Christmas Movies. Joining us from the control room is our producer, Ted Johnson. Good morning, Ted. Good morning. Ted. Sad. We'll Sad save, day. Ted, we'll save our tears for just a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, Christmas in Rome mania. How, uh, tell me about this movie that I haven't already, the, the little sentence I read there. So Lacey Shea Bear is trying to start up this new travel company in Rome. And it's going about as well as you would think it would be going. Yeah. Uh, until she bumps into this guy who's he's rushed, he's trying to close this big deal, uh, and she has to give him a tour around uh, Rome, and uh, then they kind of sort of hit it off, I guess. I guess that's but they don't really have any chemistry, so. We're looking at a scene where the young man is using a sifter quite, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, anyway. They made, um, they made panettone. They made, I'm sorry, what? Panettone. Well, there we go. I mean, yeah. Um, now, this looks like a uh, high budget, Ted. We're looking at the video. It looks like it was really shot in Rome, was it? Um, some parts. Okay. Uh, but I think the majority of it was shot in Romania. Romania, so it's really the movie, now Ted, I'm a little confused here, the, Chris, the movie's called Christmas in Rome, but it's really Christmas in Romania. Yeah, who would have thought that Romania actually looks like Rome? I, 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 who knew? I, I don't know. Okay, now all season long, we've been, we've, been, we've been praying, we've been wishing and hoping for a Hallmark Christmas movie with the queen of Hallmark Christmas movies, Lacey Chabert. Here she is popping up on our season finale. Yeah. Did she live up to your Lacey Chabert expectations? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Very low expectations for her. Um, you know, I feel like she should have, maybe she didn't have an, a wake up call the morning she shot this, but it, it was. Sleepy? Mm-hmm. Real oh. sleepy. Real sleepy. If I'm if I'm hearing what you're saying, are you are you saying to me she it looked like she phoned this in? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, not Kelly Pickler level. Okay. Slightly above. 
Okay, because to recap, because this is the season finale, it's fair to say in the dozen or so movies you reviewed, Kelly Pickler's acting ability, in your opinion, is the bottom of the list. And it's not close. It's not close. Donna Mills, the top right there, right? Yep. Okay. Patrick Duffy. Fantastic. Lacey Chabert, comfortably in the middle, Ted? Ooh, I wouldn't say comfortably, but yeah. Okay. Middle-ish. Let's go through, before we get the rating for the final time, our checklist. All Hallmark movies have Hallmarks. Uh, was there a kiss in a gazebo in a town square? Ooh, town, ugh. So, okay. This is, this is where it gets a little uncomfortable. They did the big finale kiss at the Vatican. I don't know how I feel about that. But it was also in front of a green screen, so it wasn't real life. It was in a green screen in Romania. So, <laughs> can you kiss at the Vatican? I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I don't think so. I don't, I, I don't think you can do it on the Hallmark Channel. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. Okay, uh, small town girl, small town boy goes to big town to make a difference. Did that happen? American boy, American girl, go to Rome. Okay, and then finally, we can check the Lacey Shea Bear box. Finally. Okay, finally. Okay, Ted, as they say, all good things must come to an end. For the final time, Ted reviews these movies based on Hallmark Gold Crowns. Four is basically Gandhi. One is basically Cats. Christmas at Grace. Yeah. Jeez. Ted, how Jeez. many how many crowns? I wanted this to be good. Crown and a half. Crown and a half. You get a half for not doing it in America. There, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, producer Ted Johnson. He'll be back tomorrow with his review of Cats. We're gonna wrap up the show when we return. Stay right there, everybody. Back in the audience. Sorry, cat lovers. I love you. Kendall is uh, getting ready to sing at church tomorrow. Are you excited? Yes. That's right. Uh, yes. We do it every year. My family and I, we all sing together, and I usually do some kind of a solo, and this year we're singing with the church choir. And you're a little stuffy. You're a little, And I yeah. have a bit of a chest cold. Yes. Oh, there it is. You um, are going to do great. I'm wishing you the best. Yes. Thanks, Chase. I mean it. You're going to do great. Oh. <clears throat> Well, look, you turned into B. Arthur there. That was fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Jace. Again, if you want tickets to our show, uh, I return on January 6th. We have a show tomorrow. Don't worry, everybody. Mm -hmm. But you can get tickets on our, on our Facebook page. Just search for Jason Show TV on Facebook. Click that ticket tab. We're going to take a break. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this. Where did that voice come from? The nether regions. Look at this great audience. Welcome back on this Monday, kicking off Christmas week. Happy second day of Hanukkah. That's right. Happy second day of Hanukkah, everyone. And it's a fun week. This is a fun week because it's a lot of folks, you know, we get a couple days mm -hmm. off at least. So everyone's usually in a good mood. So oh, I, yeah. I, I love this. And people are watching too. holiday movies. We are in a debate. We are in a debate in the commercial break. Mm -hmm. What do you think is better, love actually or the holiday? I feel like. Do you, they need to weigh in. We need like a, an applause. Okay, who meter. thinks love actually is better? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> who th okay, who thinks the holiday is better? <laughs> oh. Aaron, please have those people removed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love both movies, yeah. but my best friend Jen is very has is adamant. She thinks the holiday is way better than Love Actually. Really? I think Love Actually is just, one, other than National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, it's one of the best Christmas movies. I just like them both. I do, I, I, I like them both. They're equal to me. They're equal? Okay, that's yeah. fine. I mean, it's very Home diplomatic. Alone is like, woo! And then there's like everything else. Yeah, Home Alone is, again, go watch the movies that made us on Netflix. Watch the Home Alone episode. Mm -hmm. It'll talk about how that movie was made. It will change the way, in a good way, that you look at that movie, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow on the show, speaking of movies, Producer Ted reviews Cats, everybody, the movie. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. That and more tomorrow. But right now, if you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. We will see you tomorrow.